Let's dig 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 and let's take a look at custom ore generation in Minecraft 119.3. Alright, we found us back in Jelly once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at custom ore generation right here in 119.3. This is, of course, in continuation here with the uh, lovely bootstrap method and the generation. So, this is all going to be generating some JSON files. So, it's going to be generating some configure features and some place features. And we are going to start in the mod configure features class. So, for our ore to spawn, first of all, we need a custom key over here. So this is going to be the citrine underscore ore underscore key. And this is going to be called citrine underscore ore. Very nice. Then in the bootstrap method, we'll need some rule tests. Now rule tests are very interesting. So you can see it is from net Minecraft structure rule. We're going to just auto complete this with tab. And we're going to call the first one stone replaceables. And this is equal to a new tag match tag tag match rule test there you go and this is block tags dot stone or replaceables this guy right here there you go and then we can duplicate this with control d and we'll call the other one deep slate replaceables and this one is indeed block tags deep slate or replaceables there you go the rule tests are basically there to check can a particular block be replaced by a certain ore block? Because of course, right, in our blocks over here, we have the citrine ore and the deep slate citrine ore. Obviously, the citrine ore should only be placed in stone and stone adjacent blocks, right? And deep slate ore should only be placed in deep slate blocks. Otherwise, it would look a little out of place. And that is the idea of the rule tests. Now, we can actually check the rule tests themselves as well. I believe this should be in the or configured features class or configured features. There you go. I'm pretty sure that in the bootstrap method, they have all of the rule tests over here. So you can see there's one for netherrack and the one for base stone netherrack as well. So you can take a look at those as well. And this is once again, of course, a vanilla class that is just highly recommended to be taken a look at for your or needs, they'll say. So you can see there's some or configurations uh, but let's just continue over here. So right, and after we have this, we actually need to sort of map the replaceables to the particular ores that will exist there. For this, we're going to make a new list of type or feature config dot. Let's just import this with, with alt enter dot target. There you go. And this is going to be the overworld citrine ores. This is equal to list of or feature config dot create target passing in the stone replaceables rule test here and then passing in mod blocks dot citrine or dot get default state and then the second one this is going to be another one over here and that's of course going to be the deep slate replaceable so that's deep slate replaceables and that is the deep slate citrine or basically saying hey any of the stone replaceables can be replaced with citrine or and any of the deep slate replaceables can be replaced with deep slate or nice and now we can register this. So now just call the register method over here, passing in the context, passing in the citrine or key, passing in feature dot or, and then making a new or feature config. That is exactly right. Passing in the overworld citrine ores and then a size over here. This should be the vein size. So this should be the rough vein size. I'm still unsure whether or not it's the max or the min or the average you know, once again, when it comes to the numbers, I highly recommend just playing around with them until you get roughly what you want for them. And you can always, of course, also take a look at the or configured features class that we've seen before. And you can take a look at the sizes over here. So you can see or gold has nine. You roughly know like how often that one spawns, right? Or coal, you know how roughly how often that one spawns stuff like that. So I highly recommend taking a look at this. So that is very much recommended to play around with those numbers. Now we have the configured feature. That's pretty good. But we also need a place feature, of course. Now for this place feature, we need one more thing. And that is a custom class. Now I personally just like to do this in a custom class. It is not entirely necessary, but it just is kind of nice. So this is the mod or placement class. And the mod or placement class is actually sort of taken from the, this is the or placed features. So or placed features, this one right here, because we need these three private methods that we're just going to copy. So we're literally just going to select this, copy those, and then place this into the mod or placement class over here, and then making them public because otherwise we will not be able to access. There we go. This just makes it a whole lot easier for us to create our placed feature over here. Because our place feature, let's just take a look. This, once again, of course, is also a registry key. So we need a registry key. This is the citrine underscore or underscore placed underscore key. And then here, we're just going to call this the citrine 
underscore or underscore placed. Beautiful. And well, this is pretty much a similar idea. We are just calling the register method right here. Then we're passing in the context. We're then saying citrine or place key. Absolutely. We then use the configured feature registry entry lookup once again that we've made last time. And we're taking this and we're using this to or get or throw, passing in mod configured features dot citrine or key. So we're referencing the citrine or the citrine or configured feature after the first closing parentheses, comma, mod or placement. So this is the custom one. I just take you modifiers with count. So you do 16 in this case. Now I just put 16 in here as an example. This is going to be the veins per chunk, right? So well, this was the rough vein size, right? This is going to be how many veins per chunk actually spawn. And then there's two more interesting things, and that is going to be a height placement modifier, height height of range placement modifier is what I want to do, that uniform. And now comes the offset. So now we're going to use a Y offset. Now we can choose above bottom, below top, or fixed. I'm going to choose fixed, and I'm going to explain what the others mean in just a moment. So we're going to have two of those, and both of them fixed from minus 80 to plus 80, and you can see no more errors are present. Now fixed literally just means minus 80 Y level, right? Then there's also the above bottom. This would mean, right, so if we were to have above bottom zero, this would mean minus 64 Y level, because above bottom is basically the bottom layer is minus 64, right? And an offset of zero is minus 64. If we were to do 64, all of a sudden this would be Y level zero. This shouldn't be anything crazy. It's literally just addition and subtraction. So then we also have below top over here, this one, and that is going to be zero is going to be 320. I believe that is the highest level of the world. So that's the height and that's it, right? So you do like minus 320, all of a sudden you're at Y level zero again. That's the general idea. So I usually say fixed is probably the thing that you want for most of this. This defines the bottom and the top for your OR distribution. And there's also different types of distributions here in the height range placement modifier, right? So we are choosing uniform. There is also trapezoid and you can even make your custom one with a custom height provider. So the trapezoid is basically just a triangle so that between those two numbers, right, you get the most amount of ores spawning and uniform is just that there's a uniform distribution across these two numbers. And this is almost everything. Now we just need a new class over here that this also spawns. So we're making a mod or generation class over here. And this is basically going to be almost the same thing. So I'm just going to copy over the tree generation one here and we're going to call this generate ors. And then we just need to change some, well, important things, but regardless. So first of all, we want to make this maybe spawn in the overworld. So we're going to say found in overworld. And then this is the underground ores and then the mod place features of citrine or placed. There you go. And that is pretty much all that we need here. Now we just need to call this right here. What's very important here is that when you go into the generation step features, right? If I can middle mouse one click on this, you can see that the underground ores comes before the vegetative decoration. So in our mod world generation, it's extremely important that we call mod or generation that generate ores before we generate the trees. This is at least what has been important in the past. I do recommend keeping this in mind. But that is actually all that we need. We need to register our configured feature right here, our place feature right here, giving it the correct placement modifiers and stuff like that. And then we can go here and run our data gen. Let's do this. Let's hope that everything works out, but I'm pretty sure that it will. And then let's see the JSON files. There we go, build successful and three written files. Let's see world gen configure feature. We got the citrine ore right here. This is a Minecraft ore and it has a size of 12. That's exactly what we put in. We get the targets over here, beautiful. And the place feature is citrine ore placed. And we can see we have pretty much everything that we want, a uniform distribution here from minus 80 to plus 80. And that this all seems absolutely correct, exactly what we wanted to. So let's jump into the game, make a new world and let's see if it works. All right, fans, us back in Minecraft and let's just get a night vision over here, night vision potion, and let's descend into the depths below. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I can already spot some of our ores and they are plentiful. So you can see in this case, right, there's there might be a little bit too much of them, but that's fine. This is why you can always change the numbers around and you're gonna get a different effect over here, right? So this is pretty awesome. But you can clearly see our custom ores are spawning great. Amazing. Well, right, that's it for this tutorial right here. Hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah.